that she does the same to Laura Weintraub. Now remember, Weintraub never got out, even though she's wearing a jammer helmet. She is a blocker, hard gunning rather past her, and picked up the point. Now don't be confused as you see these blockers pass by gunning. In the WSL, once the points go on the board, they stay that way. So Heather Gunnan picks up three points and puts the enforcers back in the lead. Well, I mentioned earlier in the game, Ken, that Heather Gunnan matches up very well uh, with Mindy Smith as her as Mindy Smith seem to be taking a little bit of the activity from the jam into the post-jam interview, so to speak. But Heather Gunnan doesn't match up with some of the other players, some of the female jammers in the World Skating League. She does match up very well against Mindy Smith. You saw what that advantage did for her right there. And once she came around to the back pack, she was able to pick up a whole bunch of points. It's been a very seesaw game. Never more than one or two points separating these two teams as both teams desperately wanting a win. The enforcers want to maintain their elite status, if you will, in the WSL. And Richard Brown has certainly told us hot guys a win over New York moves them into one of the elite teams. And we've got the same matchup again. Heather Gunnan, number 35. Mindy Smith, number 36. Mindy Smith obviously wanting a chance for retribution. Whoa. And she gets it right there, returning the favor. The big elbow drops Heather Gunnan to the track. And now it's Mindy Smith all alone, the only jammer out right now you see gunning back up on the track but remember she has not left the pack the pack went around and passed her heather gunnan wearing a jammer helmet in effect is nothing more than a blocker mindy smith now gets by big cannon abraham trying to get by a good job by mindy smith she has passed gunnan she has passed abraham for a point karen magnuson now and shelly rosell both dropping back we run out of time in the jam. Mindy Smith picks up two points for the Nevada Hot Guys. Well, the feud between these two continue, Ken, but I have to admit, I was just about to get ready to say that, that Mark D'Amato was making Little Richard Brown eat, his, eat my words because I had said that the Hot Guys had gotten out to an advantage. But I didn't say it, but I had to eat egg on my face anyway, as Mindy Smith got the better of Heather Gunnett on that one. And these Nevada Hot Guys seem to have a little bit more in their bag of tricks than the New York Enforcers do, Ken. It's been a very seesaw game and a very closely tight fought game. And now coming out for the Nevada Hot Dice, this is Shea Brown, their largest and most physical player. And the New York Enforcers counter with number 32, April Toodle and Linda Leisure. Buddy, it's almost a strategy. The two teams really try to go for matchups. When it's speed, it's speed. When it's physical play, it's physical play, even with the jammers. Well, that's right, and it's going to go back and forth like this. And I'll tell you something. These ladies and the enforcers have stepped up a notch, and I'm talking about speed notch. Now, we have talked about Shea Brown. Speaking of stepping up, buddy, Shea Brown in the last few weeks here in the World Skating League has really stepped up her game, become very much a complete player, showing a little bit more of the physical play we thought we would see from her at the beginning of the year. But right now, having a tough time getting by the double block being set up by Shelly Rosell and Karen Magnuson. And a great job there. Her teammate pulls the two of them down. But I think the referee is saying time and run out in this jam. And you see the frustration on Shea Brown. And now Linda Leisure gets a little frustration she wasn't quite expecting. Well, it's Shea Brown, Ken. You talk about matchups. Our buddy just was talking about matchups. Shea Brown is the one wild card, I think, for the hot dice because nobody on the enforcer team has the size of Shea Brown while having the speed. She almost has Janet Abraham's size, and she almost has Heather Gunn's speed. Not a good matchup for the enforcer. And now you hear the whistle. It's a 14-13 game. The hot dice, the pack is reformed. And you see the New York Enforcer women now getting a little serious. They go with Karen Magnuson and Shelly Rosell. All in all, I think for the Enforcers, if you combine speed and physical play, these are the two best all-around jammers. And for the Nevada Hot Dice, the two leaders of the showgirls, Kim Hart and Laura Weintraub. Keep an eye on Magnuson and both go down. The elbow Magnuson goes down, but you see the determination as Rosell stays on her feet. Karen Magnuson gets up very quickly. And a great opportunity for New York now as Rochelle is passing one and pass the entire pack and still comes around. Shelly Rochelle picks up five. Karen Magnus at four points. And at the very end, the New York Enforcers blow it open, scoring nine points on that jam. Well, they scored nine points on this jam, Ken, but this high stakes chess match continues with Shelly Rochelle just had the advantage in that matchup. I've got to think that the hot dice have plenty left. 
and we see Karen Anderson and Shelly Russell just were a better matchup on that jam, but let, let's give some time to the New York, or to the Nevada Hot Dice to make another good decision. Buddy, you called it right. The enforcer certainly stepped up to speed. At the end of three, it's an enforcer lead. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Nevada Hot Dice 14. Welcome back, everyone, as we get ready to start the fourth period. In the third period, a virtual offensive explosion from the New York Enforcers Sisters of Suffering. I don't think there's any doubt. Big Janet Abraham and her sisters really turned it up a notch on the showgirls. Well, to the people at home, can you see the egg on my face? Because in the halftime show, I just touted the praises of the showgirls, the showgirl sizzle, the whole Nevada Hot Dice team. Boy, didn't they make me look like an idiot, but I tell you. Hats off to Janet Abraham and the Sisters of Suffering. Well, maybe just Nevada wasn't watching halftime and didn't know what you expected out of them. I'm still an idiot. Buddy Atkinson, in that third period, led by Janet Abraham, she deliberately went after Kim Hart, the leader of the showgirls, almost to make a statement. She sure did. And you'll notice what happens here. She grabs hold of this girl real quick. Hart didn't even have a chance. Abraham got a hold of her. Look at this. Down and hard. That was a mean play. Biggest lead of the game for the New York Enforcers up 22-14. You see the starting line start. That's the way we start every period. Oh. Number 13, John Morrissey trying to go to the inside. Mark Weber put an end to that very quickly. And suddenly oh. it's Tim Washington and Mark Weber. Oh. Weber leaves his feet, comes down with an elbow. Washington taken by surprise. It's not very often. Tim Washington, who is six feet eight on his skates, gets caught from up above, but that's exactly what Weber did, and the big guy was absolutely stunned, and this is a good look at Mark Weber, 5'10", 200 pounds out of Cincinnati, Ohio, as he comes around closing in on the pack. Washington now stays back as a blocker, and you know Tim Washington is not about to let Weber get behind him or in front of him after what he did. The elbow sends Weber right into the rail. Washington keeping a very sharp eye and takes him down with a bulldog, a half bulldog. Washington stands right over him. Mark Weber perhaps having second thoughts about the big elbow. He dropped on Tim Washington. No points on that one. Whoa. Well, and this is almost a carbon copy, Ken.